Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Lex. I'm here at, uh, at Integrate, second day, and we have another episode of our Azure on Air uh, podcast. Uh, and I have the privilege to host this, uh, this session with uh, Julia Kasper from uh, Microsoft. Uh, yeah, well, welcome to the podcast, uh, of Thank course. you, Lex. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, so far, this is your second time you are here with us, if yes, I'm not yeah. mistaken. Second time being at the conference and also second time at the podcast. So yeah, 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 yeah. fun times. How's the experience for you? Uh, yeah, uh, as a Microsoft employee here at, uh, at, uh, at the venue. At, at Integrate? Uh, at Integrate. I think for us, it's always so much fun coming to London because it does give us the more European perspective to our customers. Yeah. You know, um, most of our conferences are in Redmond or they are in the US. Yeah. So we are more biased, biased towards US customers. So it's always fun exploring different countries and like um, yeah. meeting customers from different countries, which is also very important, right? Because we are we want to build products that work for anybody. Um, so having and talking to all of these people is definitely very valuable. Yeah, yeah this is very true, of course. Yeah, the product should solve real world uh, problems and challenges and yeah, yeah, add business value to a customer. Um, but yeah, there is not an event like this in, in, in the States, right? I mean, not that focused on integration. Yeah, oh. not really that particular about integration services here, right? No. So um, we also always use it kind of as a team getaway um, to get together, yeah, yeah. meet yeah. with customers here and meet everyone from the integration services yeah. space. Because you might be surprised, but we don't get to see everyone who works on integration services that regularly. No. Um, not even yeah. in the US, so um, it's also great for us um, yeah. as a team to meet. It's, it's a big team, right? I mean, there are so yeah. many integration-related products. Uh, meanwhile, uh, yeah, so it's it's a huge team, of course. So yeah. that's totally understandable that you won't see everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does the rest of your week look like? Will you need to visit other customers, or you will you return back to Seattle? Or? Yeah. So this week, I'm actually going to return. Um, usually, if I do get the question, "Hey, what does a day in the life of a product manager looks like. <laughs> um, I usually explain we are kind of the firefighters. <laughs> so <laughs> in the morning, I check my teams or um, emails. I kind of see, OK, what's going on? Do I have to jump on a customer call? Do I have to um, go to stand up to talk to our engineers? Yeah. Do I have to, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a bunch of business planning going on. Um, so it truly depends on kind of the cycle we are in with yeah. product, but also kind of what's happening um, like in the world last year, l last week, I was um, at the AI Engineer Summit World Fair in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So these are also um, some some kind of things or some kind of task you do as a product manager. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah, so yeah, you already mentioned you are a project uh, manager. Uh, you are at the uh, APIM team. Uh, have you been there? Yeah. Well, since you landed in, in Seattle or before, how did it go? Correct. So um, previously, I worked as a Microsoft consultant in the German um, subsidiary. Mm. Then I s made the switch towards product management. Mm. Um, I think I always kind of knew I wanted to be working more closely with product. Uh, mm. So that's why I was see, um, seeing what are some of the opportunities, which also came with a move. Uh, so that's when I uh, moved to the US. I moved to yeah. Redmond three years ago. And mm. since then, I've been in the area of Azure yeah. API management or API management in general. Yeah, that's indeed that's, that's, that's funny that you say because I had a similar uh, a similar uh, journey. I also come from a consultant's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, background uh, in integration, of course, uh, biz talk, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I've also used the products that we develop, uh, firstly as a customer, mm -hmm. uh, and nice. now I'm on the other side, on the vendor side. But yeah, having that visibility and understanding those. Uh, real world issues that customers are facing that adds so much value. Totally. Uh, yeah. And well, I mean, I think also between Microsoft and how we work, there are a lot of similarities about customer, yeah, uh, yeah obsession mm -hmm. even uh, to get in touch with them, really understand what they uh, what they need, uh, what yeah. they run into. So that uh, adds a lot of value. No, it was a super great school being in consultancy before, especially being an integration services product, I mean, the name says it, right? We have to know how to integrate with other products with other services. Yeah. And being in product, sometimes you only look at your product, of course, because you're trying to yeah. evolve. But you, it's very important not forget about all of the other 
scenarios no. or the other use cases you actually want to enable. So me working with customers prior definitely helped a lot and better understanding what are some of the challenges exactly. people yeah. are trying to solve yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and APIM is an interesting field, of course, just, just like you said, because it is uh, just one product, but it connects to all those other Microsoft services. And you really see that customers try to expose their APIs via API management, uh, but that must be supported, uh, of course, yeah, by all the different services. Uh, yeah, well, behind APM in, uh, in that case. Yeah, um, 100%. And I think especially nowadays with AI and everything shifting towards AI, it's such a fun spot to be in, yeah. being in the API space, because we are the ones powering all of these agents, these AI applications. So it's a very interesting um, yeah, area and like product to work on these yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, yeah, a little bit uh, uh, deeper on what you're actually working on. Yeah, APIM, uh, can you tell a bit uh, yeah, what's, uh, what's happening at the moment? Uh, what has been maybe the most recent uh, announcements? What's, uh, uh, well, yeah, we already discussed uh, MCP a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah, <laughs> lots of things. Um, I think f overall, we are definitely looking at AI and how we can a enable our API management capabilities and make it AI proof. Yeah. So that's where we came up with the terminology AI gateway. Mm -hmm. And so over the last couple of two years now, we started to step by step um, enhance our product. Um, and make it more an AI gateway, of course, still with the same capabilities, but shifting towards the narrative, but also shifting towards more and more features, enabling these um, AI scenarios. And the most very, very recent one is um, MCP support, the model, model context protocol, which kind of took everyone by storm. Uh, <laughs> I remember, I think in November, one of our our engineering manager reached out and he's like, hey, Julia, I saw this very interesting blog post about MCP that Anthropic is currently working on. And I remember, especially during November, it's kind of a, a stressful time right before the end of the year. So yeah. I was like, oh, no, I haven't read it. Kind of like, <laughs> don't not? bring it up. Don't Why bring not? it up. I don't January have time for it. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then in January, everyone talked about it. So everyone started looking at us and was, well, what is APIM yeah. doing? What's, yeah. Yeah. So we truly had to move very, very quickly, mm. um, which was a very fun time to be around. So yeah. um, at Microsoft, especially being in product, and um, sometimes if our leadership hears these big terminologies or these big things that moves very quickly, they put together a task force. So in January, Microsoft put together a, an a MCP task force, mm -hmm. and I was kind of, the voice of Azure API management or remote MCP servers. Yeah. Um, and that's why it truly got m deeper into the top, like in, into the topic. And then we had to move so quickly for build, which was um, in May. And we have to make sure that yeah. we are kind of f future proof for MCP. Yeah. So yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Can you tell a little bit more on it? Yeah, well, yeah, what's the value that is, uh, yeah, that is added mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for customers, MCP? Totally. Um, so MCP stands for Model Context yeah. Protocol. It's an open source um, protocol um, developed or introduced by Anthropic last year. I want to say last year. At least that's when I heard about it for the first <laughs> time. Um, and essentially the use case is the last couple of years we talked about agents. We talked about AI applications, which uh, means you're connecting a front end with your back end with your back end LLM. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of use cases we saw and customers everyone started building these um, AI applications. Yeah. But very quickly, people started to realize these AI agents are only <clears throat> as valuable in this domain, but what about integrating it with external data sources? So Anthropic came up with this protocol that lets you easily integrate external data sources. Yeah. Um, and that's where um, the client server our architecture came up. So the model, the protocol essentially is built upon a server to client um, architecture yeah. and it connects the two different pieces and you have your client, which can be an agent, for example, Copilot Studio yeah. Copilot yeah. Um, that easily wants to integrate not just with your LLM and um, it also wants you to um, integrate with your external data sources, your MCP servers. Um, and the MCP, the protocol essentially enables the communication between these um, two yeah, different yeah. pieces. Okay. 
Um, so those MCP servers uh, are sitting, of course, between the client uh, and the, the external data sources. Is that correct? So how it works is there are two different types of MCP servers, hmm. local and remote. Local yeah. means um, NPX packages, something that you have locally on your computer, you can download these and install these packages. Okay. In my space, especially being in the API space, we mostly looked at remote MCP servers, which are APIs. Yeah. Um, so if you look at how you build remote MCP servers, it's very, very similar what we have seen for years now in the API space. Um, it's people, there's a huge conversation about are remote MCP servers now APIs? They are not. They have a lot of similarities. Yeah, yeah, um, that's not the same. But they are, pur think yeah. of it, they are purposely built for agents. They are purposely built for LLMs. Yeah, so indeed. some um, pieces are different than APIs. And that's why Anthropic came up with the protocol of MCP yeah. and started to involve and kind of have a purposely built API for your LLMs yeah. in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, uh, yeah, this, this, this really interesting stuff, right? And yeah, you mentioned about the, the data sources. What kind of data sources are we talking about? Um, so uh, I've seen a lot of partners um, that now build their remote MCP servers, and essentially they're just exposing cert certain APIs as tools. Um, so where's the um, similarity between remote MCP servers and APIs is? APIs have endpoints, they have operations. MCP servers have tools, which essentially are API endpoints. Yeah. So that's, think of it kind of as a wrapper around your APIs, yeah. and you now have your remote MCP server, and you're exposing these API endpoints as tools towards your agents. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I see databases integrations, I see yeah. um, Anything you can do with APIs can now be done with these remote MCP servers. Yeah, MCP as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then depending on where those uh, data sources are running, uh, well, yeah, yeah, different sets of information will be available, of course, and can be exposed. Exactly, via, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. By MCP and, yeah. uh, and APIM. So not every integration should or can be a remote MCP server. I always want to say that. It, of course, always depends on the use case. Um, but with this new wave of now making it standardized, standardized how to integrate your data sources to yeah. with agents, um, a lot of new scenarios come into place yeah. and make it easier um, for developers to start building these start data sources. Yeah. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Especially in a world where LLMs models are changing constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What have you already? Uh, yeah, are you talking to customers uh, with this, and have you already seen interesting, yeah, uh, scenarios, uh, yeah, that, that intrigue you and that add a lot of business value that 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 excite yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, I think right now we mostly talk to partners hmm. because partners kind of see this as a business opportunity for yeah. them to say, oh, we can now expose some of our services as remote MCP servers, and you as a developer, you can easily just integrate these remote MCP servers in Copilot or in GitHub Copilot and start interacting with them. So um, I'm not sure I, I'm allowed to talk, like say any partner names. <laughs> <laughs> I think one we shared at Build, which also excited, um, which brought a lot of excitement for me was the Figma remote MCP server. Mm -hmm. Uh, think of the scenario as a developer, you're building out this web application, you're building out your front end and you have your Figma designs. But yeah. rather than you as a developer always going in and looking at this designs and getting the components from there, mm -hmm. you can now ask Copilot, GitHub Copilot in your IDE in VS Code, hey, can you go to this Figma file and show me, get like dimensions or get mm -hmm. me the pixel um, color of certain components in my file. Yeah. Um, and it just makes it yeah. more efficient, easier for them yeah. staying in their IDE, just thinking about building out this their front end yeah. um, rather than always going back and forth and then exactly. yeah. copying weird components out of the Figma <laughs> file. So it's essentially about developer productivity. Yeah. Which yeah, is very yeah, exciting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, yeah, this, this. Well, yeah, the prompting part is, of course, yeah. Uh, that's 
deal is very exciting indeed. Uh, how easy it is to get specific information out of uh, out of it. Exactly. Uh, but yeah. Nisha, especially yeah, this scenario as well. Especially if you can combine it with uh, oh yeah, uh, partner knowledge uh, or Nisha uh, company knowledge. Uh, yeah, that adds a lot of value and gives mm -hmm. very good insights, uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I am uh, pretty much out of my questions. I don't know if there's anything yeah, you would still like to uh, convey yourself. I think. Um, yeah, I maybe. Uh, so we talked a lot about MCP, right? Um, I, MCP, now we talked about MCP, remote MCP servers being essentially an API. So kind of the message I want to get out there is they are not the same, but you can apply a lot of already familiar governance management practices that you have done um, previously with APIs to remote MCP servers. And that's where a API management comes in again, right? Yep. Yep. So you can start logging, you can start registering or deploying these remote MCP servers to your API gateway solution. You can apply the same um, security governance and um, capabilities on top of these. So there are a lot of similarities and that's what we are here for. That's what we um, showcase with all of the latest features and yeah. API management with it as, as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a new way to expose your APIs and yeah. we are kind of here to support customers and partners to do yeah. that. Yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, also what would be a good starting point? Uh, yeah, to start using those MCPs because, because is everything already in GA at the moment? Or? So we have a preview and um, the latest okay. preview is we saw a lot of customers or big enterprise customers who've recently, they've spent years building REST APIs or they've spent years building APIs in general. Um, and now the world looks at them and it's kind of like, oh, remote MCP server. So it's a new protocol. It's something new that you have to build. And um, so one of the latest features we had is um, we are transforming, in a way, REST APIs in APIM into remote MCP servers. Yeah. So usually what I tell them is um, get into the AI gateway preview. We have a separate channel for API management customers that you can yeah. sign up to and you get all of the latest AI capabilities. With that, you can now find a new blade in API management that says MCP. And based on that, just test it, exactly. maybe Starts transform, boring. yeah, transform yeah. one of your already existing REST APIs into a yeah. remote MCP server. Maybe you're yeah. like everyone out there has a fun use case that yeah. they can think of and then give it to uh, GitHub Copilot and VS Code and like start testing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just give it a go and uh, exactly. start small and uh, evolve and uh, yeah, yeah, see where it ends up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks uh, for I having me. I don't know me, if there's anything, any final words maybe from your side? Um, no, I'm excited for the last <laughs> day at Integrate. Um, let's bring it on and see how the world changes within the next year, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Things again, yeah, just go so fast. It's it's so incredible, true. right? I mean, yeah, and yeah, so well, yeah. It's, integration is just a great place to be. So that's, uh, yeah, well, yeah, just fantastic. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for being uh, here with us uh, today. And, uh, well, yeah, probably we will meet you next year again. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And to our audience, this was uh, yeah, another episode of uh, Azure On Air. And uh, we hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.